Hello loves, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing another Orisha story time. Um, as always, I kind of do what I do with like bibliomancy to like pick which story we're gonna talk about today. Um, so that's what I did, I just put my finger in between because um, I already found it before I started the video. Um, but we're gonna be using a, this book. This is a really amazing book, you guys know. Um, I've been just promoting it for a while now. This is called The African Narratives of Orisha's um, Spirits and Other Deities. And it is written by Alex Kuoku. And it is a very, very thick book, okay? It is literally a textbook. And it's all about stories um, about different spirits um, of Africa. Um, and it covers quite a lot, Ifa, and it's very, very just it's just brilliant i really just enjoy going through the stories and the reason why we have um these videos orisha story time it's meant to be like a class um and having a discussion of the lessons because stories are usually passed down through elders you know our parents our grandparents or community elders and stuff are supposed to pass down these stories to us but obviously for those who are in the diaspora we can't really you know that we don't have access to Nigeria in that capacity. So um, these these types of books are really, really amazing um, for just learning and, and the stories. The stories um, in all tribal cultures are a big part of learning lessons and they teach you a lot about life and teach you a lot about um, understanding and your movements and how to, how to navigate certain things just by listening. Stories are really, really powerful and they can help you and shine the light in, in different ways that you might have not thought um, that you needed to shine that light. And so, um, yeah, this is why I love doing the series with you guys. And I hope that you guys have been enjoying the series as well. Uh, today, we are going to be reading from page 48, okay? Page 48 um, to 49. The story that we're going to be do, uh, reading is Orumila and the Lurking Darkness, okay? Okay. Um, that's the story that we're going to cover today and i feel like I, it's, it's interesting that that's like where my eyes went for this um because i do think that it is a very very important one and i think it kind of fits the vibe of everything if it's the vibe of everything it fits the guidance um so let's let's just get started and then afterwards we'll we'll kind of break it down do some questions and stuff like that okay one day long ago in Ile Ife, Orumila saw something strange lurking around his farm. Frightened, he ran to his babalao. What is this strange thing lurking around my farm? What does it want? The babalao consulted the oracles and his ori on his behalf. The oracles say that it is a dark presence and your ori says that you should offer sacrifices to ward off this darkness. Orumila said, what should I offer? The Babalao said, you should offer two pigeons, two okodo fish, and 2,000 cowries. Offer the sacrifices to Ori, and then, and when you finish, come back to see me. Oromila offered the sacrifices and returned to the Babalao. What should I do now? The Babalao gave him a bow and three arrows. Take these arrows, go back to your farm, and shoot them over your land. Oromila took the bows and arrows, returned to his farm, and shot the arrows. Each of the arrows hit Iku. No, sorry, Eku. I pronounced his name wrong. Um, on his chest, and he fell on the ground in his great distress, and Iku um, left the earth. Orumila said, Ah, it was Eku. Now he left my land for good. Orumila was so happy that Eku left without causing him any harm that he danced all the way back to his hut. He praised the oracles, his Babalao, and his Ori for their guidance. Sorry, I kept pronouncing that wrong. I my my Spanish hit me and I shifted the e to the to the i and the i to the e. Anyway, um, but I think this is such a powerful story because I do think that there are times in our lives that this reminds me of like those moments in life where you just don't understand why something's happening. You're you're just like something's happening. You're just like there's something weird going on. There's something here. What's the issue? What's the cause? What's the, what, what is the problem? How can I solve this? And it's almost like, even though Onomila is the wise Orisha, very much connected to knowledge, um, it, it's like, 
still needing guidance, still needing an elder, still needing um, to seek for a resolution in a place that is not biased. Because I feel like a lot of the time, especially when we're all dealing with our own kind of na things navigating life, we can kind of like get into um, some situations out of bias. Um, and that happens a lot when you read um, like tarot for yourself specifically. Um, it's it's really really and it, it it comes down to our ego you can have literally like the a really great reading and if that one card that was just like the not so negative like not so positive card comes up you're still gonna want to interpret it for yourself as something like good um then that just speaks on love and light culture as well but there are there are certain things that we are biased about as peoples that we are um actively not trying to we can't we can't accept the fact that a situation is what it is for what it is um because of the complexities of the situation because the situation is heavy because the situation is uh like it feels like you still want to have the upper hand and you want the the the, the divination that you're doing to be, have your back and be like yeah you're gonna get through this you're gonna win but it's like sometimes it's like no the tower card no the death card no like you know the ten of swords or something like you know you just and you're just like what does it mean what does it mean so it there there are these moments where we're trying to kind of get it together and, and what well, we need to seek um elders we need to seek other people other members of the community other you know of another outlet because this it's one of those things where our biases can really cause us harm and then later on when we are in the middle of the situation we remember that card and it almost like haunts us like it came up in the reading it came up in the reading you want you just want to look at the positive things you just want to look at the positive things then but it came up in the reading you know it's one of those things you have to be very mindful about trying to understand if, if that is your key if that is your goal is to understand what's actually going on when you get the information you shouldn't try to twist it and make it into what you want right Eku is death um and so it's really interesting how the story like just place on how death came to like the farm and it was almost like a shadow it almost like why are you lingering around me what's going on why is death here and it's interesting because when it comes to death working with death you guys know i talk about a lot about death on the channel um but it's interesting how even though death itself was like who had to you know be there was a whole ceremony that had to be done for for uh Oromila to feel like his space was sacred again but also when it comes to death that was also that transition that's also part of what death does it shifts the energy um so there's still like this almost like double meaning to the story because it's like even though death itself was lingering it like it was just like i don't i don't want death to be lingering around me i i would like to transition out of this energy so it's interesting how it uses death's energy to shifts death in the space I, I hope that you guys are understanding what i'm trying to say it's a very it's a little bit of a conundrum but i still think it's it's important to kind of break down in, in your head um and to kind of understand and seek to understand and, and kind of work out um it's really really important for us to make sure that we are not trying to like lose ourselves or, or hold our ego so up high that we can't see red flags we can't see like we are we recognize the red flags but we don't want to accept the red flags for what they are like the red flags are literally waving and you're like oh my god what is it i see a red flag but then it's like you don't want to accept like once you find out the truth you, you might not especially if you're doing divination for yourself you might not want to accept the outcome or the solution um so this is a really really important one to focus on making sure that you are recognizing your need to seek outside help 
um, especially from people that you trust, um, from readers that you trust, um, because it is one of those things that sometimes other people will be able to put something into perspective or we will just their bluntness can give you a little bit of a, okay, okay, I guess I don't, I, I guess I can't convince myself otherwise, because I feel like we're always trying to save ourselves in our heads because sometimes we can also be our greatest enemy if we allow ourselves to, you know, not listen to our elders not listen to our spirits not listen to you know the guidance not li not listening to the guidance is oh, most of the time especially in these stories will 1000 percent get you in trouble because it's kind of like you were told you were given information you were guided and you still didn't do the thing so it's one of those things where it's like you have to have that self-awareness you have to have that self-awareness you have to be aware of the complexities of how you're navigating certain situations and if you're seeking help if you're seeking guidance if you're seeking um you know like a reading and stuff like that you 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 need to accept the messages for what they are even though even if they might be a little bit complicated or even if they you know like they might confirm something for you but you your ego might still fight it a little bit but it's still it's important to follow through the motions because these systems are set in place our elders are set in place are 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 those the people who can guide us whether it be through divination or whatnot they know what they're doing they know what they're doing they know how to how to navigate these situations and it's so important to address that it's so important to um make sure that you're elevating yourself through the guidance that you're seeing that guidance as no i this is a message from spirit i i need to get this together i need to i gotta do it um there's levels there's layers and there's levels and i think that is really really important to make sure that you have you're carrying that self-awareness and you're not just trying to uplift your ego to uplift your ego that's really that's really one of the biggest messages for me for the, for this let me know in the comments what you like took from the story i feel like it's definitely ha it has layers to it um but it's and it also speaks on protection work and in recognizing when you know energies or other spirits or other things are infiltrating your space and how you navigate that how you deal with that how you pinpoint it how you address it you know how you recognize what's going on um so let me know in the comments how do you recognize what's going on are, would you if you if you were being honest with yourself would you say you are biased when you like read tarot or do certain divination for yourself would you say that you can be a little bit biased would you say that you um like you know have issues holding yourself accountable spiritually sometimes do you do you feel like you can trust the guidance from others more than from your, yourself sometimes um do you follow through with the direction and the guidance that you are given like let me know in the comments how you kind of navigate your own journey and in how you you deal with the energy like this because i do feel like this is something that is very like it felt very like one step two step three step like if automate like just ignored the whole thing it was like oh yeah, that's a weird vibe here but you know like not did anything about it like death it could would have escalated you know the whole entire energy would have escalated so it was more of like you see Oromela go to um this process of oh something's off i need to seek guidance this is a guidance i'm gonna do the guidance i'm doing every single step um so it's it's just like it's interesting so let me know in the comments how you kind of navigate your own um i hope that you guys enjoyed the story as always um the book will be linked down below for those who are going to want to get it um as always it will be linked down below and yeah i will definitely see you guys in the next video i have th definitely make sure you subscribe also don't forget we have a workshop this month on the 19th is going to be on the lunar eclipse is all about self-love because i do think that we need to be taking care of ourselves during this time it's been energy has been very heavy um and i feel like we need a little bit more like a little tender love and care for, for ourselves so that's what this workshop is going to be about um and it's going to also launch my self-love workbook which i'm really excited about so stay tuned for all that um my other two workbooks are still available in the shop on my website for those who are interested in getting it and yeah i love you guys so much thank you guys for all the support thank you guys for literally everything i love you guys so much i will see y'all in the next video